Well, hello. Welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John. This is our Easter version of uh, what is this airtime uh, kind of grab bag. This is our trying to do a monthly grab bag to keep up on stuff. Uh, a couple of things we picked up at the flea market. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, we have uh, oh, we're going to look at a shared. And you know, I keep getting people emailing me that they're trying to rebuild uh, their Sheridan and they're having trouble getting the end plug out and so I got some tips on that that might you know might help people out and um, I don't know there might be some other stuff so anyway welcome to the grab bag and let's get going there was a lady there with an estate sale and she had this this is a marksman I think it's a 2000 um, BB pistol. It says repeater, which is a bit of a. Uh, it's being generous uh, to the gun because to make it shoot, you gotta go through all of that. Well, that to me a repeater is a, a little bit easier to repeat. And then um, this pops up, of course, and you put your BBs in the top. And every time you shoot, you gotta kind of shake the BB down in there. And it works. The safety works. Let's see. Push for safe. And uh, I'm going to shoot it off here into the trap. Um, so it works. It, she wanted 20 bucks for it. I don't know if you can see that. It's marked 20. I, and I said, well, how about 10? And she, uh, she thought about it for a minute. And I said, look, I'm actually doing you a favor by buying this from you because uh, otherwise you're going to carry it around to every uh, flea market swap meet and nobody's ever going to buy it. It's just going to be in your way. And she came back with 12. So I paid 12 for this. Knew they probably run 25 or something. So it's not a great deal, but like I say, it functions and kind of a fun little gun for just uh, plinking around or, uh, you know, short range kind of stuff, BB stuff. So there's that. Well, I paid 50 for this. And uh, the reason is it's, it, it's beat up. The stock is ugly. And this was taped shut. The, uh, you know, that's always a kind of a sign that there's something wrong when they have to tape the pump arm on there. Uh, but I thought, well, um, yeah, I can fix it. This is a C9 Sheridan. Uh, Benjamin Sheridan and um, it's got a serial number well we'll take let's take a look at pull the stock off here you can see it I, th I think you can see that it's one was it 115 423 R and, uh, and of course the other engraving and it's from uh, you can see that Racine Wisconsin and the thing about this is the R kind of had me stumped, and I've seen R's on uh, refurbs, like I had a, a Benjamin Marauder, Benjamin Marauder refurb that had an R on it. And so uh, I went on to the vintage air gun forum, and they basically confirmed that that means it's a refurb. So this gun went back to the factory for something. We don't know what. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what we've got there. What was obvious, it's missing a screw for the trigger guard here. That's no big deal. We can, we can do that. Uh, and for the great reveal, when I got it home, I went ahead and cut the tape. And we'll take a close look at this too. And voila. Uh, <laughs> well, it does have a... Let me get it out of there. It does have a uh, le lever, a link here, but uh, maybe you can see it's kind of wallowed out. Where is it? No, wrong way. There it is. It's kind of wallowed out, and the hole here is wallowed out as well. And there's a lot of play here. Not so much on this, this one, but on this one. And you can see that somebody had tried to repair this at some point. And who knows what they used, but it's, uh, it's got the tube kind of um, messed up here. 
and and looking at this you can see it's really wallowed out that hole there so what do you do when you have that situation and my solution uh, is to call Rick Wilnecker at Precision Pellet and I'll put a link in the description here he sells these um, levers with the link already installed and the spring so it's all ready to go and install into your gun rather than try and repair uh, this lever and link I'm just going to replace all that stuff so that that's about it it was pretty quiet oh by the way I think this cost like 25 bucks or something for these and uh, I mean that's a bargain the amount of work to make this uh, functional again with the the wallet out it you know it'd be several hours there and so this is this is a good deal well probably the most common question I get people email me about these Sheridans and they're trying to rebuild them and they get this end of it pretty much apart I haven't taken the bolt out yet but we've got the uh, trigger and the springs and the safety and whatnot off and they get stumped here because this um, oftentimes is pretty tight in the tube, the end plug here. And I don't know why Sheridan made it a, a kind of an interference fit almost. And uh, But it gets stuck in there and then sometimes people have put stuff through their system here that's uh, sometimes you wonder if they've run super glue through it that's uh, landed down here and holding that all together but there's a couple of things you can do so get your hair dryer mine's uh, Vidal Sassoon and you can heat this up uh, on high heat from the hair dryer shouldn't hurt anything and uh, set it up somewhere and let the heat run on it for a few minutes and that'll oftentimes loosen up the uh, connection between the plug and the tube that's a that's a probably my number one suggestion propane um, I don't recommend it but if you're really gentle and don't run the propane for more than a few seconds at a time here uh, you might be able to get away with it um, there are seals in here that uh, if you get it too hot and they melt um, and I've seen that happen uh, just become a, a incredible mess to clean up what you don't want to do too is dig out the vice grips uh, although if you use something like uh, a soft pad or some wood or something uh, leather maybe but the problem is still how do you grip the darn thing it's just not set up to grip very easily so this is kind of an option but not a great one Another thing you don't want to do is uh, insert a pin into these pinholes and try and twist it off because you're liable to break uh, that tab. And then there are sources, you know, it's not the end of the world if you break this. I find oftentimes what works actually is just to take a plastic mallet and just gently tap. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull that bolt out of here. Okay, now we're ready. We can tap it all the way around. So the last thing I'm going to mention is if you have a, a V-block, a wooden V-block, not a metal one, or if you have a bench vise that's got a deep enough groove in it, you can set the uh, you can set it in there put it in your vise and then you're able to put some twist on it oftentimes it takes a combination of these things you know, a little bit of heat a little bit of tapping and something like this where you can grip it and uh, it'll come apart eventually but all right so we've put some gentle heat on here with the hair dryer. I've got my uh, blocks in here, the V blocks. 
we're going to see if we can't uh, twist this off. Now, you know, I took off the front end here too, and we'll see what we can do here. Okay, we're starting to get her to budge. So at this point, we're going to go back to tapping and see what we can do there. The thing about tapping is that um, you got to be aware of where, uh, when this lets loose, where it goes, because it might fly off across the room on you. Well, it looks like I picked a good victim to pick on here, didn't I? If you can see that I'm going to zoom in here we'll take a closer look okay so you can see that it's just starting to separate very slightly so we've heated it we've uh, put it in the wood we've tapped on it uh, we put it back in the wood again actually I didn't show it but we did and now we're trying to tap it off. So it's warm to the touch uh, based on the hair dryer. So we are making progress. We'll just keep gently tapping on it. And there you have it. It's out. No wear and tear on the tube. No wear and tear on the uh, end plug, and we got it. So all I can advise is patience. Take your time. Use all the tools at your disposal, and uh, take this out safely. And like I say. One last thing I want to say about this um, before we finished tearing it apart is that I've had a few lately that um, I've had brain freeze I guess but it's a good idea at this point before you pull out the uh, valving here go ahead and see if you can push that valve stem because there might be air in there you can take a mallet put it down like this and this one ain't moving for some reason. Oh, that's probably why. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so that valve opens fine. What I did is I, I have two ends of this. One is threaded for something, I don't know what, and the other is uh, for the valve uh, stem, to hit the valve stem. I put it in that end. Good thing I didn't beat on it harder. Okay, so just a word of caution, because it's always a, a, a surprise, and not in a good way when you pull the nut out of here and everything else flies out with it. Okay, enough about that. When I take the valve out, I use one of these. And it goes in and you uh, screw it onto the valve stem and then tighten this up and it you know the the act of the thread uh, pulls a, the uh, valve out if you don't have one of these and most of you probably don't well what I was going to show here before my microphone battery died on me was just uh, a, a way that you can take out the valve using your tool and uh, giving it a good whack and the, the way this works is you set it up on a on a block or something and uh, you, know, you know in a safe way that's not going to hurt the gun or the valve or anything and have another um, uh, pin or something go through the valve tool uh, and give it a good whack it can't be way up in the air but a good whack near uh, another block of woodwork so give that a try if you're having trouble uh, getting the valve out